When it comes to developers that have achieved connection between themselves and their player base, you would be hard pressed to find an example better than Blizzard. And well, what is the secret? How has Blizzard championed this relationship between player and dev? Well, it can all be summarized in 12 simple words. What is up Overwatch community? This is Jeff from the Overwatch team. The reason. There are several others, but the core reason why Blizzard has cultivated such a fantastic relationship relationship with its community is this simple dev vlog which is nothing more than the lead dev talking straight to the camera about upcoming features. And you may be thinking, so this twice a month dev vlog, it can't be that popular right? Well, it is. This vlog, what is again nothing more than the lead developer talking about future gameplay features, is so popular that it averages a million views per video. A million views. That is a number that rivals even the most successful YouTubers. If three years ago you were to tell me that this would be one of the most popular vlogs on all of YouTube, I would have probably called up the mental asylum because one of their inmates must have broken loose, but it happened. This series is insanely popular and will continue to be for years to come. And I think a great way to realize exactly why this is such an effective tool for developers is by looking at a game that doesn't use this this tool. Rainbow Six Siege is as of right now one of the most popular games in the world, but here's the problem. When I say Ubisoft, or more specifically Rainbow Six Siege, who comes to mind? Which person? Which individual face comes to mind first? Now I imagine some of you might be saying one of the Rainbow Six YouTubers or just Satan, to which, um, okay, okay, <laughs> to, to be honest that's a fair point, but that is a massive problem, because the developers at Ubisoft are faceless. When you think about the people at Ubisoft, you don't think of them as people, you think of them as grey men, a faceless collective whose only evidence of their existence is the end product, where somehow the netcode gets worse with each and every update. Now don't get me wrong, the folks behind Rainbow Six Siege have done a really good job at making a good product, but an area where they have almost entirely flopped is achieving a healthy human relationship between themselves and the community. It is exceptionally hard to feel an emotional attachment to a faceless collective, and that's a problem that Overwatch just doesn't have, because when I say Overwatch you don't think of a faceless dev team, you think of the man, the meme, the legend Jeff Kaplan. And in this video, I don't want to just talk about how Blizzard has championed the concept of community, but I also want to explain why a simple devlog is not only a good thing that more developers should be doing, but it is a downright necessity in this day and age. Right now, we are living in the digital world and times are changing, when before if there were for example a novelist whose work you loved, the most you could ever do was read their work, but now with Twitter and Instagram and all the other platforms out there, you can not only consume that creator's content, but you can get to know the person behind the pen, and that right there is where the industry is going. We are living in the digital age, where building respect and a good relationship between creator and consumer, well it's more important right now than it has ever been at any time before in human history. It is not a stretch to say that Blizzard has earned the spot of being one of, if not the most trusted game developer out there, because they have so actively engaged with the community in such a positive way. Blizzard has built a brand where you feel as if the devs are players just like you, and are just as passionate about the game as you are, but a lot of games out there like Rainbow Six Siege, Call of Duty, CSGO, just haven't achieved that same reputation. And because Jeff makes these vlogs, he gets memed on, and he gets memed on hard. Take this clip for example. And you feel like your teammates, they're all playing the game with no hands, is because all of us on the Overwatch team at, and at Blizzard, we feed on your negative experience. So we want you to feel really frustrated and angry. In fact, the guy who made that Dino Flask has built a very successful YouTube channel where the entire focus is him remixing Jeff in his Overwatch updates. And they're pretty funny and I would thoroughly recommend, but what makes people like Jeff even more is that when the community reacted to his devlog by doing this, by parodying him and making fun of him, he didn't do what a lot of other people do when they get memed and reject it, but he acknowledged the joke and has warped his persona to join in with it ever since. In case you're wondering how to spell Moira, it's spelled O-P-A-F, just in, in case you're wondering. All the characters are broken and overpowered. 
I think that's pretty awesome because the internet has has sort of ruined my ability to read certain words. Uh, I don't know what the word broken even means anymore. So whenever I see the word broken, I just take that as a compliment. So that's awesome. And his embracing of the joke culminated in a 10 hour live stream where he did nothing but sit in a chair and eat cookies. And it wasn't edited. He really did sit in a chair for the full 10 hours before trolling the community with a fake hero announcement. Me and the Overwatch team are very excited and very proud to announce that the next Overwatch hero is going to be... Oh. Heard it here first. I think you're gonna be as excited as we are. And this whole notion of having a good dialogue between the developers and the players, it isn't just beneficial, but for some games that don't have this dialogue, it can lead to the player base downright hating the developers. And I think a great example of this is CSGO. I main CSGO for two years of my life, and it felt like every other month the devs were adding in crazy, stupid changes that went against all basic logic, like adding in unbelievably OP revolvers that were dirt cheap, that fundamentally broke the way the game worked. They nerfed things that didn't need to be nerfed, they broke things that worked fine before. The gun sounds were great, and everybody liked them, so what did Valve do? Of course, for absolutely no reason, they changed the gun sounds in an update that made them sound not only far worse, but where before the sounds for each and every gun were distinctive and unique, and after they were a hodgepodge of ones that sounded barely different from one another. That was, and still is, an update pretty much universally hated across the player base. In short, to summarise the relationship between Valve and its CSGO community, it looks a lot like this. Um, what I was thinking of was, um, oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. Now, the fact those game-breaking updates happened was annoying, but the worst part was that they would always come out of the blue. There was no technical test server where Valve let the community give feedback before the changes were incorporated into the main game. They didn't poll the community, and to be honest, they didn't care what the community wanted to be in the game. Valve just did whatever they pleased, with no regard for how much the community would resent them for it. In reality, the only dialogue Valve has ever had with its community is the patch notes, and that is just bad. It was, and still is, an awful practice from Valve, and when it comes to community building skills, Valve has some of the very worst in the entire gaming industry, and is tied at the bottom with the very worst game developers. Now, don't get me wrong, having patch notes is a good thing, but I feel I can speak for the majority of gamers when I say that most of us don't ever read the patch notes, because quite frankly, they're really quite boring. Well, usually. It is no longer possible to try for baby with a creep. <laughs> Fixed a tuning issue so that Sims now vomit at acceptable levels. <laughs> now, most people don't usually read the patch notes, and nowadays most people get their gaming news from YouTube, because having a random YouTuber talk about changes in a video, well, it's just a lot more interesting than having text on a screen. However, when the source of all of your news around a game comes from YouTubers who are trying to cover it and not from the devs themselves, that inherently creates a disconnect between the player and the developer. And right now, because CSGO has so poorly managed its relationship with its community, that community has been dying. Now, it's not the sole reason the game's been dying, but Valve has been doing a fantastic job at alienating what community they have left. I'm sure most of you are aware of the skin training aspect of CSGO. It's an aspect of the game that, for many people, is an integral part of why they love it. And then Valve released an update that pleased almost no one, and upset almost everyone. This update killed the most active part of the trading community by dramatically increasing the time it takes to trade an item, as Anomaly explains in one of his videos. Say I would trade for an item with someone, and then I would want to give that item to Steffe, and none of us, uh, me or Steffe, have two-factor authenticator. That would take 44 days until Steffe gets the item from the day that the trade is completed between me and the first guy. That's fucking ridiculous. So basically, if you don't have a smartphone, it's it's literally useless. You can't trade. By the way, Anomaly is a great YouTuber. You should check out his channel. But that update was so 
unpopular. That the community started a petition to remove it, and that petition, as of right now, has over 150,000 signatures. That is a truly massive number. And now I may be wrong, but I looked all over the internet and I checked a good five or six times because I genuinely could not believe my eyes when I couldn't find a response from Valve. The community voted overwhelmingly to have a change made and the developers didn't just say no. What they did was so much worse than that. They didn't even respond at all. And if Valve had their ear to the ground, if they had a dialogue with their community, this whole fiasco and the several dozen other fiascos that have happened over the years that have damaged people's love for the game could have been easily avoided. The devs at Valve right now have a terrible relationship with their player base and they are suffering for it. And it is not because of the community, it is because of Valve. And the fact that they have not just put in a small amount of work, they have put in no work at all into building a relationship relationship between them and their fans, so as a result, they don't really have any anymore. But you look at Overwatch and Blizzard, and it's the polar opposite. They are so in touch with their community, it is honestly heartwarming. So a number of developers' family members have contracted breast cancer. Okay, so let's create a character skin where all of the proceeds go to cancer research. So the community has a wealth of people who like to cosplay. So let's start a competition where we give credit to the individual members of the community and their hard work. So the fans have started to turn the lead developer into a meme, so that developer joins in with the joke and makes fun of himself. So going back to CSGO, I imagine some of you might be thinking, but Valve does have a face. And that face is Gabe Newell, the man, the meme, the legend. Valve has a terrible relationship with its community, but they also have a face. Well, yeah, that's a good point. But here's the thing. We all know who Gabe Newell is. But let me ask you, have you ever actually seen Gabe in a video? Have you ever actually heard Gabe's voice? And the answer for the overwhelming majority of you is no, because outside of a few presentations at live events and a few very rare interviews, he is never on camera. And to anyone who works at Valve who might be listening, I have a suggestion. It's free, so take it or leave it. But what you do is you get Gabe Newell, put him in front of a camera once a week or once a month, and simply have a five minute Q&A where he answers the community's questions, or if he's feeling up for it, have him make a proper weekly vlog where he talks to the community and explains where the company is going, tease upcoming games and whatnot. Such a vlog would require a tiny amount of Gabe's Newell's time. It would require almost no resources whatsoever. But the benefits of having a simple vlog like that for Valve would be overwhelming. And purely by the existence of such a vlog, overnight you would see a tenfold increase in the amount of people who respect Valve as a video game publisher. Okay, well technically Valve doesn't really publish video games anymore, but that's, but that's aside the point. <laughs> In this vlog, we wouldn't even need to know what's coming out. All we need to know is that behind the faceless company is a guy with his own personality and quirks. Vlogging is a powerful tool where not only does it get more eyes on your product, but it also builds a connection between the devs and the community, and it does it far better than anything else. However, vlogging is also a criminally underutilized tool, especially in the gaming industry. Now, I doubt Gabe will ever start a vlog, but that right there is a strategy every game dev team should be adopting. I've been playing a lot of Escape from Tarkov lately, and I've also been uploading a few videos of it on my second channel, which you can totally check out in the top right of the screen for some quality gaming videos videos from uh, yours truly. Um, uh, okay, uh, sorry, sorry about that shameless plug, but part of the reason I'm so excited for the future of Escape from Tarkov is because the devs are making a dev vlog where they show how the game is being developed, they show the behind the scenes, and even though it's mostly in Russian, it's still quite interesting to see how the devs are going around recording the sound effects and talking about how the game is going to progress. This is just my own opinion talking, but I can say that one of the biggest reasons I'm so excited for the future of Escape from Tarkov is because of the vlog and the fact the devs are so open about where they want to take the game. 
And if you want to see the effect these vlogs are having, you need only look at the comments. You look at the comments for the dev videos and you see genuine enthusiasm, which I used to incorrectly think outside of E3 hype did not exist in the video gaming community. Uh, but you see hundreds upon hundreds of comments of people giving praise, giving constructive feedback and saying good job to the developers. What? That, that, that's impossible. That, that should not exist. That's never happened before at any point ever in the gaming community. That right there should be the end game for every developer out there. I used to incorrectly believe that the gaming community is quite cancerous. Okay, well, you can, you can debate me on that in the, uh, in the comment section. But recently I've been thinking that that's just a half truth. Because after making this video, I feel I've learned something quite interesting. That the community around a game is only ever as cancerous as the developers allow it to be. Because with a well done community strategy, that developer can cut out the cancer and improve the quality of the player base tenfold. You can create a popular game, but if you don't treat the players right, they won't stick around. But when you treat the players with respect and build a very human relationship between them and yourself, that makes the players think about the developer with a fondness that no amount of free DLC or patches ever could. And because Blizzard as a game maker has achieved an unparalleled relationship with its fans, Blizzard truly has won the gaming community. Now I am no Jeff Kaplan, but I love this community. There is no place that makes me feel more at home than being a part of it. And if you want evidence of that, I have a third channel. I know, I know, I've, I've got a, I have a lot of channels. Um, but it's called The Closer Look, which is essentially this channel, except I talk about films instead. And it's thriving right now. And it's thriving so much more than this channel is. Now, I won't say how much, but it's earning me a lot more money than this channel is. But despite all that, I'm making these videos anyway. I know full well that this is an illogical use of my time. I know that if I want to further my career as a YouTuber and make more money, I should double down on the closer look. But I'm not. This community means that much to me that I'm willing to take a pretty substantial pay cut just to be a part of it. And that's just what I do. Of this channel, I do things that I love. I delve neck deep into gaming culture and make essays talking about my passions and dislikes around this community, all the while trying to be unbiased. But to be brutally honest, I often fail at that. And to sometimes, well, less than positive reviews. Uh, but I love every second I spend making these videos. However, they are really quite time consuming to make. And sometimes it can take several weeks just to do the research alone for one video. For example, that hour long documentary I made on Mass Effect. So that's why I've lately been turning to you guys for support. And if you like this channel, you find my videos interesting and just like me, you're excited to see where this channel is heading, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. Right now we're about to cross the 100 supporter mark, which is just, um, <sighs> Which is just nothing short of humbling. Uh, and if you donate just $1 a month, you will get one week early access to all of these videos. And you'll also get access to our Patreon exclusive Discord, where you can chat with our little community about the games you're excited to play. And also you can talk to me and ask me questions and suggest video ideas that you want me to make. Um, I've been playing a lot of Rainbow Six Siege lately. So if you want to play it one evening with me and the lads, then all you have to do is donate just $1 and I'll see you there. But anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you so much to my patrons for all of your support. And I will see you guys in the next one.